from the Victory Studios in downtown Little Rock, this is Capital View with your host, David Goins. And good Sunday morning to you. Welcome into Capitol View. Thanks for being with us. As we inch closer to the end of the year, Congress in the middle of their so-called lame duck session. Senator John Bozeman joins us a little later with more on the road ahead for federal spending and immigration. But first, a look at the week in Arkansas politics. And we start with the report calling for major changes to the Arkansas Scholarship Lottery amid slumping sales and declining revenues for scholarships. The consultant report pushed for by Texarkana Senator Jim Hickey found the lottery suffers from public trust issues, largely stemming from internal fraud and bloated salaries from its original executive director during the lottery's launch five years ago. But the report from Camelot Consulting said the lottery could increase revenue for money for scholarships going forward. Lottery Oversight Committee at the Capitol spending more than three hours on these findings on Friday, also gaining some attention. Hickey's plan to increase requirements for receiving a lottery scholarship requires students going from a 2.5 to a 3.25 GPA and a 19 up to a 22 ACT score for graduating high school seniors. Hickey says he's hopeful to stem the tide of students getting lotto money but never going beyond their freshman year. That is a huge amount of money that is being put out there that's probably not going is well is not being used for the intent that that program was was used for to actually further their to further their education hickey pre-filed that legislation on friday ahead of the session starting on january 12th outgoing attorney general dustin mcdaniel says the environmental protection agency needs to scrub its carbon reduction plan. In a 12-page letter, McDaniel says Arkansas would rank sixth among states in total reduction for the EPA clean air rule, which he says would have a huge impact on a state that sits 46th in per capita income, saying, quote, the proposed rule will have a devastating effect on the interests of ratepayers as well as the economy of Arkansas. In addition, the proposed rule so significantly exceeds the authority granted to the EPA by Congress that it should be withdrawn in full. The final rule set to take effect in June of next year. Former President Bill Clinton says he's pleased with the economic impact of placing his presidential library and center in Little Rock. The 42nd president sharing those remarks at the Little Rock Regional Chamber of Commerce meeting on Thursday. A report released during the 10th anniversary events for the library last month found that the decision to put the presidential library in central, central Arkansas has translated to over $3 billion in economic activity on both sides of the Arkansas River. I noticed one rather snobby reviewer when we opened the library said it looked like a high-class trailer. And I thought that's all right. <laughs> You can say that 10 years later. Uh, Clinton added the design was meant to symbolize his bridge to the 21st century during his presidency and literally a bridge across the Arkansas River to join the economic energies of both downtown Little Rock and North Little Rock. According to the Arkansas Department of Correction, 42% of those released from prison returned there within three years. It's against that backdrop of a potential new prison on the horizon next year. Lawmakers also wanting to explore ways to lower the recidivism rate. Capital View's Brittany Johnson shows us the effort underway to make sure people let out of jail don't end up back there. I need to get a job. That's the first thing offenders tell Reuben Johnson when they're released from state prison. He needs to reconnect. He needs to get a job. Because if he's not, he's going to go back and do some of the same things that got him back in the Department of Corrections. For more than 20 years, he's worked at the Gist House, a nonprofit that serves as a transitional home for offenders battling substance abuse. Coming from that same environment, there had to have been somebody out there to uh, reach a hand out to help me. Now that he's returning the favor, he's seeing others stumble over roadblocks on the road to reentry. If you don't have ID, you can't get a job. If you have mental health issues and you don't address those, then you, you're right back where you started. Johnson is glad to see local and state agencies joining to improve the system with this newly released report. Committees made 24 recommendations that include creating an online resource portal, giving a tax credit incentive for businesses to hire offenders, and strengthening supervision and treatment for sex offenders. Some of the recommendations are low cost. Others will require funding and lawmakers approval. I want to see people actually do what they say they're going to do. Johnson says the report is a step in the right direction. He's looking forward to the recommendations turning into reality.
And some of those recommendations include adding additional parole officers and probation officers as well. Now, lawmakers will discuss funding some of those recommendations when the session starts in January. Well, the Arkansas Department of Human Services says enrollment in Arkansas's compromised Medicaid expansion continues to grow. On Friday, DHS said 223,000 are now eligible for health care coverage paid for by Medicaid. And that 213,000 are now enrolled in private health plans, just a 10,000 gap there. The decision on changes or possibly ending the private option expected to be among several of the large topics covered when the legislative session starts next month. And Congressman-elect French Hill says he wants to hear from people before he heads to D.C. in January, hosting what he's calling Coffee with French Hill. That tour starts Monday in Conway. Hill, a former banker, says it's a chance to hear from people before he gets to work in Washington. One need not drink coffee to attend, however. Coming up after a quick break, Senator John Bozeman is here to talk about what's happening in D.C. during this lame duck session. I'm David Goins. You're watching Capitol View on Sunday morning. Your life doesn't have to stop when the power goes out. You can protect your home from power loss even during ice and snowstorms with one call to Power Systems by Royal. Our standby power systems turn on automatically and run on the natural gas line in your home so you don't have to worry about dragging it out, filling it up, and running an extension cord throughout your home. Get power to your entire house within seconds. Keep important things like your refrigerator, lights, water, and heating unit running no matter what happens. Call now for your standby power system during our end-of-the-year savings sale and receive a free one-year maintenance agreement. Don't be stuck without power this winter. Call Power Systems by Royal Windows & More. Hi, I'm Missy Gibson. At John Gibson Auto Sales, we offer our customers the opportunity to buy almost any vehicle. We have over 800 cars, trucks, SUVs, motorcycles, ATVs, boats, trailers, or RVs. We will finance your purchase in-house regardless of your credit history. You can actually make your purchase from home. Simply go online to johngibsonautosales.com, view our inventory online, click on financing, fill out the credit application, then come and pick up your purchase when you are ready. We call it shopping made easy. See you soon at John Gibson Auto Sales online or in person. Yeah, it's a touchdown, all right. All over the carpet, yeah. It's a stain. It's time for the boys in blue. The boys in blue can clean your carpets, upholstery, tile and grout, even your hardwoods. You know, you should call the best in the business. Call the boys in blue. The boys in blue. Woo pig. Watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. All right, welcome back to Capital View. I'm David Goins. We are joined this morning. Our guest is the soon to be senior senator from the state of Arkansas, Cong or Senator John Bozeman, former congressman, of course. Thanks for joining us this morning. Well, thanks as always, David, for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so let's get to this lame duck session that started, you know, Monday, essentially. Yes. Um, the, you know, the big uh, attention grabber was you know a spending bill right. um, is that essentially what what this this session was about what's kind of your takeaways from what you've seen so far it is sadly we're in a situation now that the federal government's budget started in October here we are into December almost to the first of the year and we still haven't haven't you know we haven't decided how the money's going to be spent so we've simply got to do that and so we're working really hard to try and get that done Okay, so the proposal right now basically would fund the government. Does it go all the way through September 30th of next year, or is it just to, just well, to September 1st? that's really what the discussion is, is about right now. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea would be to, to they're calling it a cromnibus. Uh, excuse me, A cromnibus. Explain that to me. Well, this, the, this, the CR part of it, the CR part, would make it such that Homeland Security would only be funded for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. Now that goes back to the president's immigration order. Right. And, and certainly I'm upset about that. You know, Republicans are upset. Many Democrats are upset about that. So uh, you'd only home, uh, fund Homeland Security for a couple of months. And then the rest of it, the omnibus package, 
that's all of the spending bills stuck together. The rest of government, it would go ahead and, and fund the, the entire fiscal year. Through September 30th. Yes, sir. Okay, you said you're, you're upset about it, and, and some Democrats are as well. It's not unprecedented for a president to do what the president has done with, with immigration. Why is this particular executive action so politically toxic? Well, it really is. It, it is unprecedented in the sense that uh, President Bush did this, the senior President Bush, mm -hmm. okay? But the numbers were much, much smaller. And he did it in an effort to uh, cover a loophole, the, the, an unintended loophole that, of, the, of a bill that Congress had actually passed. This is not that at all. I mean, this is simply saying, you know, Congress, uh, I'm tired of waiting for, for you to pass a bill. Not only pass a bill, but the bill that I want, so I'm going to do it myself. And so that's really where it comes. And I think it's just a huge uh, increase in presidential authority. I think it's a terrible precedent. I think it's unconstitutional, but I think it's also a terrible precedent in the sense that, you know, whether you're dealing with a Republican president or a Democrat president uh, in the future. Mm. I mean, a lot of people have said this is going to be a reason why immigration doesn't go anywhere in the House. Could it be a catalyst for, for getting something done, if not, compre not comprehensive, perhaps narrow in scope? No, I, I think if the president hadn't, uh, hadn't done it, uh, he would be in better shape in the sense of trying to get something done. But, but the suggestions that, that I hear, the suggestions I like are piecemealing it, doing the border, because if you don't do the border, if you don't make the border secure, uh, then whatever you decide on, you're going to be in the same position that we're in now in a few years, okay? People are going to continue to, to, you know, to come across regardless of whatever situation you do, and then you're going to have many, many people that are here illegally. Mm -hmm. So you secure the border. I personally would like to see this worked out in a, in a situation of a visa, uh, looking at industries, you know, that need workers, things like that, and then trying to, uh, you know, go about that path. I guess the big question still, and this is kind of what the, you know, the president alluded to, is what do you do with everyone who's been here for an extended period of time, many of them who live in the state of Arkansas, what's your suggestion? Well, you don't just, you know, you just don't automatically say that, that you're here. The problem is, you know, we're talking about 11 million people. Uh, there's 5 million people in line. And then the other thing that we don't talk enough about is, is we naturalize around a million people every year. Mm -hmm. We naturalize more people than the entire rest of the world put together. So we're very, very good at assimilating people. But there is a, there is a finite amount that you can do. And the problem is, uh, if, you, if you make it such that that leads to citizenship, then you're not only talking about 11 million people, you're talking about the ability to bring in extended family, and you get up around 20 million people very, very quickly. Uh, with, again, with benefits that we're going to be paying. Right now, as a senator, I'm struggling to find the benefits, the money for the benefits that we've committed to our citizens. Mm -hmm. So the other thing you have to do is you have to protect the American worker. And when you dump 5 million people or 11 million people into the system, you know, and make it such that, that they've got a green card and a work permit. But aren't a lot of those things. people already working? I mean, that kind of the argument, if you took these people out of the country, you would, it would have a negative impact on Arkansas's economy. Is that I, I don't know if they are or not. But, but the reality is the studies show that, that if all of a sudden, you know, you give them a for real, you know, green card or whatever, mm -hmm. work permit, uh, then it really is going to affect those with that they're competing against as far as the lower skilled wage, wage earners. Okay. And unemployment in many of those sectors already, unemployment in the minority communities are very, very high right now. Well, let me ask you kind of a variation on this topic since we're talking about immigration. When we go back to the Senate bill that was passed in 2013, um, I think it had 68 yes votes, 14 of your Republican colleagues voted for it, you didn't. What needed to be in that bill that wasn't that would perhaps get your support or vice versa of what was in it that went too far? Well, I think that that, that bill is a path to citizenship and, and amnesty, and, and I'm very much opposed to that. Again, I'd like to get it worked out through a visa system. And, and you're right, many of the people that are here are working, okay? And they are in jobs that, that, that we need people working. Agriculture, you know, is a, is a huge issue uh, for our farmers. And so, you know, you, you get them squared away through a visa program, but, but you really do have to secure the border and do those things. I think the fear that I would have, the mm -hmm. biggest fear, would be, you know, you start doing some of these things, 
But, but all of these promises were made when Reagan did this you know, right. many, many years 86. ago. And yeah. they simply weren't done. You mm -hmm. know, the amnesty part was granted, but there was no... The other piece of this is you have to hold employers accountable. You know, for, if they are hiring people, they shouldn't be hiring. So you have to secure the border, which, which he wanted to do, you know, promised to do. It mm -hmm. wasn't done. And then there was no holding employers accountable. If you don't do that piece, and you do that through E-Verify, you don't make the, the business owner the immigration agent. They need a very simple system, but, but they need to follow that simple system or we need to get after them. Got a few Let's more questions uh, on this topic. Do you want to stick around for another segment? Sure. Okay, very good. We're here with uh, Senator John Bozeman. We'll be back a little bit more. We'll talk more about the immigration issue and also what the uh, new session of Congress will look like in January. I'm David Goins. You have Capitol View on Sunday morning. Your life doesn't have to stop when the power goes out. You can protect your home from power loss even during ice and snowstorms with one call to Power Systems by Royal. Our standby power systems turn on automatically and run on the natural gas line in your home so you don't have to worry about dragging it out, filling it up, and running an extension cord throughout your home. Get power to your entire house within seconds. Keep important things like your refrigerator, lights, water, and heating unit running no matter what happens. Call now for your standby power system during our end-of-the-year savings sale and receive a free one-year maintenance agreement. Don't be stuck without power this winter. Call Power Systems by Royal Windows & More. During the Home for the Holiday Sale at Furniture Row, you can score big for your loved ones. You'll find surprising savings throughout the store and get a free 50-inch HD TV with select room groups. Beautiful designs, comfortable prices. Happy Holidays from Furniture Row. Monday. We're going to go do this thing. With the finale one week away, which voice are you voting for? The heartthrob, the hipster, the tattooed teacher, the TSA officer, or the comeback king? This is your moment. We'll see how it works out. Then and critics are raving about state of affairs. An experimental virus is released. The smallpox is ours. Recover the vials. We have exposure. State of affairs is all new. Monday following The Voice Live. You must see Monday here on NBC. Stryker has a problem. It has sold hip implants that are defective, failing, and causing blood poisoning. To Stryker, which problem is more important? Your second surgery or the catastrophe they have caused for themselves. Stryker is hiring adjusters who want to meet with you. They'll be approaching you with a smile, a check, and a release. Don't go into the lion's den alone. Law Offices of Gary Green has the resources, experience, and adversarial spirit to get it done. Mm, this is great. What's in here? Laughs, fun, and big surprises. For the perfect morning, just add Kelly and Michael. We're gonna have to drink our way out. <laughs> Weekdays at 11 on KARK4. Watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. All right, welcome back to Capital View. We are rejoined by Senator John Bozeman. Uh, wanted to kind of pick up something we had uh, after the break talking about immigration. One of your sure. colleagues, Senator Ted Cruz from Texas, um, earlier in the week uh, said that you know Congress should pass a short-term spending bill. Uh, that essentially blocks the president's immigration orders. He said, quote, through funding for the Homeland Security and Justice Departments. That's part of that poll you're talking about with that uh, cromnibus, I think that was yes, the term you used. Yes. Um, you know, some people think, you know, Homeland Security <clears throat> should, should be funded through March. Others say, let's do this right away in January. Um, I know we're kind of getting to the, to the nuance, but that's really where the rubber meets the road. What's kind of your, your feel there? Well, I, I think some are calling and, and basically saying, we're going to go ahead and fund everything but Homeland Security right now. Okay, and shut it down. Uh, the problem with that is the president's going to veto that, and so we can we can do that. That's that's largely symbolic, because the president is going to veto that. Yeah, we we know it. He said it, and so uh, we can do that and and take the time to do that, or we can go ahead and then uh, actually fund government 
Uh, I don't want a government shutdown. I'm not going to vote for a government shutdown. And I think almost all of my colleagues are in that, you know, it, agree with so that. So how long does Homeland Security get funded <clears throat> through? What's, what's well, coming? I think the proposal that, that uh, you know, they've got going in the House that they're trying to get done is for a matter of months. And, and the reason that, that to me it's so common sense to do that is the playing field is so much better then because we'll have so many more conservative votes. We'll, we'll, right now, Senator Reid, uh, you know, controls it's the still Senate. Still the majority you know, leader. He's the majority leader. He decides what comes on the floor. He'll keep his guys in line. You know, they simply aren't going to accept this. Uh, in fact, in this case, the, the president, it's not going to get passed in the Senate, so the president wouldn't even have to veto it. Right. But uh, come early January, when Republicans have control of the Senate, uh, then, you know, We'll be able to dictate what comes on the floor, and I think we'll have, actually have the votes, you know, to, to get these things done. The president then would veto it, and we'll have to deal with that. Mm. But the, the playing field is going to be so much better in a matter of a month or so. Okay, so the likelihood that Homeland Security gets funded through at least a few months of 2015, do you feel is, is pretty, pretty no, strong? I think, that, I think that's very strong. Okay. Um, well, kind of fast forward to, to and January. And again, I think that's the route to go because mm -hmm. we'll have such a, a better playing field again a month from now. Okay. Um, talk to me about January 2015 and what essentially the Senate looks like. Obviously, we, we know the, the increase in, in uh, Republican majority now uh, in the Senate with Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Um, aside from this discussion of how to fund the government and, and maybe dealing with the president related to his immigration action, you know, what else would you like to see get done? Well, the thing that I'm excited about is that the Senate's going to go back to working the way that it's, it's worked in the past, uh, except for the last several years under Senator Reid's uh, control. And what I mean by that is people ask me, John, you know, I was in the House for, Up or for down several votes. Exactly, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's the difference, you know, in the House and the Senate? Well, unlimited debate. You get to talk a lot, and we've got a lot of guys that like to talk, you know. But also, the ability to, to put amendments to bills, you know, throw things out on the floor, you know. If I've got a good idea, you know, or, or maybe you think it's a bad idea, but I've got an idea and I throw it out there, let's get these things voted on. Let's get it back into committees, you know, where a subcommittee works on it first, amends it, full committee, they work on it, amend it. Uh, you know, the full House, the full Senate, conference committee, you know, all of those things make it such you don't have these unintended consequences from these 2,000-page bills that are just thrown out there that hadn't been in committee and you get so you're 24 hopeful, hours. you're so. hopeful for a more functional Senate in, in, the, exactly. in, in the traditional sense of the word. But as far as legislation goes, uh, do you see anything being, being pushed or is it more or less limiting what the president well, can get when done you do that, years? when you do that, you know, when you do it that way, mm -hmm. Th then you're going to get a lot more legislation pushed. The House has passed, you know, several hundred bills. Some of those were just show votes and this and that. But but a lot of those those bills were jobs bills that had good bipartisan support. So I'd very much like to see those thrown out. You know, let's amend them. Let's make them better. You know, let's go through the process. Mm. But I think there's a lot of things that we can get done. While while we got time here, a couple quick quick hitters here. Um, Colette Honorable, who leads the Arkansas Public Service Commission, is still waiting to be uh, approved for the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. I know you've spoken on behalf of, of, of that I happening. Had the it, privilege of, of testifying for her on Thursday, and she's got a great story to tell. And, and uh, is it going to happen? We can be very proud of her as people of Arkansas. Well. It's going to happen in the sense that, that uh, everybody's that I've talked to, and I've talked to a bunch of folks on that committee, uh, you know, making sure that things were going in the right direction. They're very excited about her. So I think she's going to get com through committee, you know, with a very favorable vote. The problem is, is just in the next week or so, finding the time, and, and Senator Reid will determine this, on, you know, to get it done. So if it doesn't get done now, do you the, think there's any yes. any drama related to it happening in January no. with the new, no. new new Congress? So no. it, it's just a matter of when at this point. It's just a matter of when. She's, like I said, she's a great story, and we can be very, very proud of her. Absolutely. And uh, the defense authorization, uh, you wanted to kind of touch on, you know, what that means going forward. Well, defense authorization is the big bill that, that controls military pay. It controls everything related to the military. Uh, you know, it, it's always done, you know, every year. And so we're working really hard to get the glitches out of that so that we, again, we can have the certainty 
uh, not only for our soldiers in uniform as far as their pay and things like that, but just the certainty as we move forward uh, for the, our leaders. Again, how can you how can you plan if you're if you're two or three months into your budget cycle, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't even know what your budget is, uh, you know, and where the money is going to be divided? So it's really important, Fair especially in, in in the world that we live in today. Sure, and I know you've been back at work for a, a few months now. How are you feeling? I'm doing great. I really, I'm really blessed and appreciate the people of Arkansas. They, uh, I had lots of prayers uh, when I was pretty sick, and uh, those prayers were answered. And I'm just doing great. And, and feeling really good. I know you've been in Congress for a while, and it'll be six years in the Senate come 2016. Do you do you still want to do it, or do you do you know yet at this point? No, I, I, I'm going to run again. I would very much like the people of Arkansas to, to allow me to, which is such a tremendous honor to represent them again for another six years. Okay, but not forming any campaign stuff yet. It's still, it's still, <laughs> no, no, still I, early for that. I people understand. can't handle ads yet, right? Believe me, I'm, I'm right. I'm with them totally. <laughs> okay. And the sad right. thing is, these cycles get so much longer and stuff. And, yep. You know, it's just a mess. Absolutely. But my concern is, you know, getting our sleeves rolled up, and and I, you know, am totally committed. And the good news is, I think that that, uh, you know, the average member of Congress on both sides really is committed to trying to get some things done in the next two years. All right. Senator John Bozeman, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good to see you, sir. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Well, when we come back, we'll wrap up this edition of Capitol View. I'm David Goins. You're enjoying Capitol View on Sunday morning. Your life doesn't have to stop when the power goes out. You can protect your home from power loss even during ice and snowstorms with one call to Power Systems by Royal. Our standby power systems turn on automatically and run on the natural gas line in your home so you don't have to worry about dragging it out, filling it up, and running an extension cord throughout your home. Get power to your entire house within seconds. Keep important things like your refrigerator, lights, water, and heating unit running no matter what happens. Call now for your standby power system during our end-of-the-year savings sale and receive a free one-year maintenance agreement. Don't be stuck without power this winter. Call Power Systems by Royal Windows and More. You're watching Capital View. Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. All right, welcome back to Capitol View. That just about wraps it up for this morning's show. Now, keep in mind, you can stay up to date with Arkansas politics by following us on Twitter at Capitol View AR. I know you are already, but it's just a reminder. Of course, download the Capitol View smartphone app. It is available in both the iTunes App Store as well as Google Play, so you are covered for the rest of your weekend. And with that, we wish you a great rest of your Sunday. Join us here next week for an all-new edition of Capital View. How did he get that down the chimney? It's an excellent question. You'll find surprising savings and score a free HDTV with select room groups during the Home for the Holidays sale at Furniture Row. Did you get the chips for the party? Nope. Cheese plate? Cheese plate. No. I made something better. You use the oven? Boom. Pillsbury Crescents. Make the holidays pop. <laughs> no, he loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. <laughs> Warm and flaky and 15. Everyone loves Pillsbury Grants. Make dinner pop. conditions, something wonderful happens. Intricate detail, unique composition, beautiful grace, just like the one who was born to die so that we might live. Jim Bullard with Spa Auto Sales. 
It doesn't matter what style of hunting you're into. You don't have to sneak up on a good deal at Spa Auto Sales. We're here to give you more bang for your buck every day. What could that be? Playhouse? Trampoline? At Denver Mattress, we're selling...